Hello there and welcome back to uh, video two in our series on evolutionary milestones for evolution and paleobiology here at the University of Manchester. In this video, we're going to look at where the material that was required for abiogenesis or the origin of life to occur um, might have come from in terms of the early earth. And then we'll look at abiogenesis itself. And I'll present two ways in which this may have occurred before finishing by highlighting some uncertainties. So the first key compound that we have to worry about when we're thinking about life, at least as we know it on earth, is water. This is a solvent for all living things. And a key source of this in early earth was infall from asteroids and comets. There's also a potential source through the degassing of hydrated mineral min mantle, sorry, minerals in early earth. And the relative impacts of those two potential inputs for water are currently uh, not particularly, I guess, well delineated. However, what we do know is that um, whichever source of water we had, as we learnt in the uh, last video, by 4.4 billion years ago, i.e. relatively quickly, we already had liquid oceans on early earth, or at least that's what the evidence suggests. The other thing that um, all life as we know it relies upon is organic compounds. Now organic compounds are those compounds that contain carbon and hydrogen bonds, some of which are shown on this slide here. All cells rely on organic compounds. So where on early earth did these organics come from? I'll give you two possible sources for these. Number one is input from space. And this is an idea that has um, grown, I think, in uh, popularity and indeed in de the detail we have of the compounds that are present in outer space. And we now know that interdisciplinary, sorry, interdisciplinary, yeah. interplanetary dust particles comets, asteroids, and meteorites contain a wide assortment of organic compounds. Those include amino acids and nuclear bases. Those are both compounds that are really important to uh, life as we know it. Amino acids are the building blocks of proteins and nuclear bases are key to our informational molecules, which I'll introduce in the next video, but those are RNA and DNA. We also know that um, these uh, interplanetary bodies are rich in both methane and hydrogen cyanide, which may have been important in, when it came to the event of abiogenesis. The second potential source for these organic compounds is earthbound synthesis. Now, this is an idea that has quite a strong history. Um, there was a classic experiment by a duo, duo called Ure and Miller, um, in the 1950s, uh, these uh, researchers sealed what they considered to be an accurate primitive atmosphere for early Earth of hydrogen, uh, methane and ammonia into a vessel. Uh, the experimental sh setup is shown on this slide on, the, um, on your screen here. They used water to represent oceans within this experiment. They use electrical discharge as an equivalent of lightning. They have a heat source and they allowed water and water vapor to circulate through this apparatus for a week. After a week, up to 15% of the carbon had been incorporated within this experiment into organic compounds. 2% of those were incorporated into amino acids, again, those are the kind of the building blocks of proteins. So that suggests that on early Earth, um, pr processes uh, that are present today, such as the water cycle, could have contributed to Earth-bound synthesis of important molecules required for life. Now, Ewan Miller's original choice of environment may have been a bit too reducing. The early atmosphere is still a matter of debate. But this experiment works with a range of different environments. So this is a second source for organic compounds on early Earth. Several theories for how abiogenesis may have occurred, that is the origin of life, exist. 
and they fall into two general schools. And one of these is primordial soup, which I have represented with this fantastic figure of a Campbell's condensed primordial soup can here, courtesy of James W. Brown from NC State University. Now this theory for abiogenesis is in essence cold, it doesn't require high temperatures, and it's oceanic. It occurred in the early oceans, and it relies upon the accumulation of organic compounds in those primordial oceans. It could have incorporated concentration of these organics through freezing or evaporation, and it would have involved reactions that lead to increasing complex complexity of the organic molecules that are present. This could possibly have occurred at the interfaces of minerals. Um, these are ideas that are still being debated um, in their details quite widely. But these reactions would have created bigger molecules through polymerization, and some of these molecules could acquire a function by chance. Now, the key thing here is, if you have molecules that have um, functions, as soon as one becomes capable of catalyzing self-replication, so of leading to uh, or encouraging the self-replication reaction, then bingo, suddenly you have a situation in which evolution can occur. Even if only a tiny fraction of the molecules that were present in this time um, were capable of catalyzing their own replication, they would become increasingly abundant because they would be helping to create more of themselves. That could lead to primitive biochemistry and essentially an evolutionary cascade which started off all of the processes that we see today. For further information of this, I provided some material that you may wish to read on the blackboard for this course. I think it's a really, really interesting and exciting theory. Other theories do exist, and one of these that I want to highlight are the kind of the metabolist school of theories. So these posit, instead of a cold and oceanic origin for um, life, a hot and volcanic origin with a primitive type of metabolic life that came first. So these ideas would have happened, still in oceans admittedly, but related to black smokers. You can see some examples of these on my slide here. As you can see from the image on the right, today these do host complex ecosystems of organisms, but back in the uh, early Earth, they would have looked fairly barren, such as the example on the left here. Now, metabolist theories for the origin of life are characterized by a continuous chain of self-sustaining chemical reactions. Simple compounds within these um, chemical reactions, such as carbon dioxide and carbon monoxide, in the vicinity of mineral-rich hydrothermal systems could have uh, entered into these reaction chains. A vital difference between this and the last theory I gave you is that this doesn't rely on informational molecules. Um, it relies upon the reactions that were occurring at the time on, on this early Earth. These reactions could evolve in complexity, and eventually genetic molecules could have been incorporated. Exactly how this may, may have happened within this framework is still a matter of widespread debate. However, what we can say is that self-sustaining reaction chains could have played an important role in enriching the prebiotic soup in the previous theory. So whilst uh, there is an cultural element to this, because we don't have much certainty about what was going on at this time, and again we can discuss why that is in our Zoom session, um, people um, are able to speculate upon their favourite theory, and an element of um, attachment to these theories I suspect beds in, and those are often seen as slightly opposing each other because the two factions tend to argue about them. But actually, um, there were many ways in which I think these two theories, the metabolist and the prebiotic soup, um, theories of abiogenesis, are actually quite complementary. They don't necessarily need to be held apart as completely standalone concepts. So that is two potential uh, ways in which abiogenesis could have happened on Earth. Now, 
as I've highlighted already, um, certainly in this particular area, we're very, very low on direct evidence from this time period. And that means that there is quite a lot of uncertainty regarding how abiogenesis occurred and then the next steps in evolution, which I will be highlighting uh, in the next video.